Welcome back to the Techmoto channel and the third video in this series of the Ultimate Log Cabin. In this episode we're going to be looking at running power and data from the house consumer unit to the cabin itself. So the first step is looking at what equipment we're going to be using inside the cabin. So I've drawn up a quick schematic of the layout that I want. In the top left hand corner I've got an office space with the computer. Top right hand corner will be a workshop bench. There'll be a floor mounted bandsaw next to the bench and just by the door there'll be a floor mounted uh, pedestal drill. In the middle of the workshop there'll be a large table saw and workbench. In the bottom left hand corner there'll be a lounge space with a large TV and a sofa which leaves me room for the motorbikes and motorbike maintenance. So we're going to need plugs all around the room and potentially in the middle of the room but what is the overall power consumption going to be? We need to have a ballpark figure before we can even think about looking at what type of cable to purchase. So one of the first and possibly most important things in the log cabin will be a high spec computer and this computer runs with an 800 watt power supply. This computer runs with three screens or hopefully in the future one large screen um, that will total around 300 watts which puts our total up to 1.1 kilowatts so far. The next item on the list is my 3D printer, the Ultimaker 3. The Ultimaker 3 runs at around 210 watts and so this puts the total up to around 1.3 kilowatts. The next item on the list is possibly going to be the biggest drain on power in the log cabin and that is a large uh, table saw. Um, they average out at around 1,700, 1,800 watts, uh, which puts our total up to 3 kilowatts. Then we can add in a few of our other large machines, such as this pillar drill, which runs at around 300 watts, um, and the bandsaw, which also runs at around 300 watts. There are many other devices that are worth considering, but it's uh, good to point out that you know, you're not going to run a lot of these tools at the same time. One thing we do need to factor in is the lighting and the cabin is going to be a smart cabin and I'm going to be using Hue devices. Now Hue light bulbs run at about 5.4 watts um, at 0.33 amps so we'll have about 15 to 20 bulbs in the cabin. We also need to factor in other devices such as soldering irons, the um, Hue bridge, the PlayStation, CCTV, uh, battery chargers and all sorts of other things. And so to have a factor of safety, I have opted to aim for around 10 kilowatts, no more than 10 kilowatts uh, feed to the cabin. This is a lot more than I need to uh, supply all of the devices in the cabin, but just to be on the safe side and to future proof the cabin for what I might want to do with new technology. So I've opted for 16 millimeter armored three core cable. Now this cable will be running over 50 meters, which means it will have a voltage drop of around 2.2% across its length. The cable manufacturers say that it has a maximum cable load of 46.7 amps, but it also says in the spec sheet that the cable can handle up to 94 amps, so it's well within what I need. I've also decided that seeing as I'm digging a trench, I'm going to run a data cable at the same time in the same trench. So we've gone for Cat5E uh, external armoured cabling that can be buried underground uh, alongside the power cable. Now, whilst there are no regulations about the depth of armoured cable uh, underground, um, it is advised that if you're putting it under grass where you might be cutting the lawn or anything like that, that you put it sort of 600, 700 millimetres deep. They also suggest that you lay it out in a certain way. So you have a bed which is free from stones. You put your cable um, in amongst some sifted material. You then put a layer of fresh soil on top and then you use a cable cover. Now I've bought a special cable cover um, that will make sure that if you're digging in that area you'll hit that cable cover, cover first before you hit um, my armoured cable. But first we need to get rid of those trees. So our very kind neighbour came over for a couple of days and helped us cut down the trees that posed a risk to the cabin. This tree actually posed a risk to the house as well so it needed to come down and also it was rotten at the bottom so um, it would have come down on its own eventually anyway. So now with these trees down uh, there is no risk to the cabin when it goes up and also we've got a lot more wood to use to make our perimeters and our pathways around the outside of the cabin. So that's all the trees down that need to come down. Next thing to do is to bury this cable. So let's go to a montage.
Okay, so we're going to call an end to the video there. Um, we still have to pin the cable around the outside of the house. Um, we've still got to run the power cable around the front of the house, and I've still got to bury the cable in a trench to the cabin. But we have run internet to uh, the physiotherapy clinic. That's up and running. We're getting about 15 to 20 megabytes a second, which is good for our area. Um, so yeah, good job done. Um, still a lot of digging to do, uh, but we'll do that in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.